Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, our text for this Reformation Day is from our epistle reading, Romans chapter 3, verses 21 and 22. Please listen. But now the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed, being witnessed by the law and the prophets, even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ to all and on all believers, for there is no difference. Here ends our text. Blessed Reformation Day to one and all. We are gathered again this day with, with much joy in our hearts for what is revealed to us once again. This Reformation Day and each and every day is the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Today is like Christmas Day, gathered around the Christmas tree, opening up the presents, and the, the biggest and the most beautiful present is opened. What is revealed as one opens this present is what every single man and woman needs and needs to have. It is the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. The name tag says, from God to you. For this gift is revealed to all and on all who believe. There is no difference. God wants all men to be saved. You too are included this Reformation Day. Yes, even the rich righteousness of God that was witnessed by the law and the prophets in the Old Testament, even this righteousness is now revealed to you. God saves all people because he graciously reveals his righteousness in Christ Jesus. Today we especially take time to understand what this righteousness is all about, first of all, and second, how one receives this gift of righteousness. Well, first of all, what is this righteousness? It is the absolute opposite, actually, of what Paul has described from chapter 1, verses, verse 18, all the way up until, well, our text. But now, the contrast is literally, literally day and night. Deeds of darkness that are contrasted with God's work of righteousness in Christ Jesus. Paul pulls no punches. To see and treasure the glory and beauty of God's righteousness, Paul makes sure we see the very opposite first. For Paul gives in bitter detail what is the unrighteousness of fallen mankind and how God's wrath is revealed against such unrighteousness. When one finally reads the words, but now, it comes as such an absolute relief after reading chapters 1, 2, and 3 about all the darkness and depravity and despair that is the common lot of all sinners. Paul describes, in short, the state of the fallen world who has rejected his creator, this world of unbelief. Paul begins by saying, in verse 18, in chapter 1, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. From heaven, he makes this revealing. Not only does he reveal his righteousness, but of course he has to reveal man's unrighteousness. Continues Paul, professing to be wise, they become fools and change the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. The Egyptians worshipped the falcon, the Israelites the golden calf. They made statues of men and worshipped them. Paul goes on to say, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshipped and served the creature rather than the creator. Romans 1.25. Then Paul goes on in the very next verse to describe what happens to men and women who reject their creator. Paul, God gives them up, gives them up to their unnatural ways, unnatural ways of homosexuality. For this reason, God gave them up to vile passions, for even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men, committing what is shameful and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error, which was due. Paul leaves no stone unturned when describing men's unrighteousness. He continues, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, 
in evil-mindedness. They are whispers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. They're not even satisfied unless they invent something else that is evil. Disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. Who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. There's a lot of uns on this, on that. Unbelievers are undone by their sin with the righteous judgment of God being death. And we sinners are gathered here this morning all also deserving of the same punishment of God's righteous judgment. For Paul continues in his description of unrighteousness by quoting Psalm 14 in our epistle reading, chapter 3, a few verses before our epistle, by saying, There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have all together become unprofitable. There is none who does good. No, not one. Well, it's not really a very happy reformation if that's all one reads. But thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. There is a but now. But now continues Paul, after he's described such a horrible mess that man has created and continues in, he says there's an incredible gracious gift from God that changes the hopeless lot of an unbeliever and gives him the righteousness of God. But now, the righteousness of God. But now, the good news in Jesus Christ. See what God has done to undo all that man has done. For there is no difference. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Paul says in our epistle reading, but now, we hear the but now, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Yes, there is none that is good. Yes, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But now, God justifies freely all people, all sinners. There is no difference. The work of Christ on the cross is accomplished, and it has accomplished the justification of all men. The present is made. There is just grace, undeserving, undeserved grace for all mankind instead of punishment. It's there. God has done it. But now it's been revealed. It's been revealed that that it is done through Jesus Christ, whom God set forth as a propitiation by His blood through faith to demonstrate His righteousness. To demonstrate His righteousness, God's righteousness demanded punishment. But God didn't punish the guilty, you and me, the people of the Old Testament. No, He had to wait. Wait until His Son came. He punished the guiltless, His Son, and by Jesus' blood, by His death, God showed that His righteous, righteousness is, is what all men need and has been fulfilled by the death of Jesus Christ. That He is both righteous and at the same time He is merciful to us. For Christ's righteousness becomes our righteousness through faith. His atonement, His propitiation in appeasing the wrath of God is our salvation through faith. Apart from works. Apart from works. That was the only way that our salvation could be accomplished. It was accomplished in the work of Jesus Christ by His death on the cross. The mercy seat of Christ's atonement was, is, was the lid on top of the Ark of the Covenant that closed the Ark and the commandments. God's mercy was revealed in His Son, Jesus Christ, who fulfilled the commandments in our stead, apart from the law, for us. This righteousness of God that justifies all mankind freely in Jesus Christ is immovable. It stands alone. It is outside man, and it is for all mankind. There is no difference. And that explains the answer to our first question. What is the righteousness of God? But there remains the very important question, how does one receive it? And we've heard a little bit already how that is received 
how it is given, well, Paul opens up the chapter in his theme verse in chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, by describing exactly how. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, says Paul, the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. It is the gospel, God's power of salvation that is revealed by faith. The gift of righteousness is made. It is for all people, but it is given only through faith. And this is how one becomes just in the eyes of God. This is how one can stand before God righteous through faith alone. Christ alone, grace alone, faith alone, Scripture alone. These are the gems of the Reformation that were revealed to Martin Luther over 500 years ago. He could not help but reveal how the righteousness of God is given to sinful men. He couldn't help but reveal this good news to the people of his time. Like Paul, he was not ashamed of the gospel, for it is everything that all depraved men and women need. We absolutely need it. All glory to God alone for, that, for all the work that he has done in conquering our sin, our death, and the devil by Jesus' death and resurrection. All glory to God alone that he has revealed this gift to us in our time and our place. But now, the righteousness of God is revealed to you and me through his word. He seals this, this gift of faith with the waters of baptism for the forgiveness of our sins. And as we confess our faith and trust in our Savior Jesus, in his righteousness alone, he offers for us his forgiveness in his very body and blood, offers us his righteousness, reconciliation for us to eat and drink. From start to finish, it is all God's grace that made our salvation possible. It was God's grace that moved him to give us his son Jesus and sacrifice him for the sins of all mankind to justify the world freely. And it is God's grace that gives to us this gift personally through faith apart from the law. Paul concludes our epistle reading with these words. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Paul concludes our epistle reading with this personal receiving of the gift that is made for all mankind. God's righteousness, God's justification for all mankind is also given to one personally by faith. And this truth, when this truth is received, it makes a man free. And he is free again, apart from the law. Uh, glory be to God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit who gives us his faith and this power of salvation in the good news of his gospel in Jesus Christ. Blessed Reformation. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasseth all human understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.